Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Nahmadu wa nusalli wa nusallimu ala rasulihi al-kareem Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in Allahumma ja'alna du'atan ilayk wa ila rasulik Wa kadakala Allahu tabaraka wa ta'ala fi kitabihi al-mubin Ba'da a'uz billahi min ash-shaytan al-rajim Bismillahi r-Rahman r-Rahim Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين صدق الله العلي العظيم وصدق رسوله النبي الكريم وأنا على ذلك من الشاهدين والشاكرين والحمد لله رب العالمين الله سبحانه وتعالى in his kindness and in his mercy has sent to the entire of mankind from the very beginning Anbiya alayhim wa salatu wa salam, prophets and messengers. And Allah has blessed us such a bounty and such a blessings that He has made us amongst the ummah of the last and final messenger, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends a prophet to a people, he also sends that which certifies them as a prophet. When the policeman comes, he comes with his badge or his ID. A product comes, it comes with the logo or with the stamp. To certify that this is indeed, this person is, he, is who he say he is. So what is that which certifies that an individual is from Allah? What is the stamp? What is the badge that they come with? Anybody? Hmm? The Prophet had no, not that lump of flesh. I'm talking about all prophets. Hmm? All prophets came with something that proved that they are indeed chosen, selected by Allah to be a prophet. How did they convince the people that they were from Allah? Hmm? What is that sign? Hmm? Oh, that's the message. That they, what is the proof? That this individual, that Musa was sent by Allah, that Ibrahim was sent by Allah, that Isa was sent by Allah, that they are a prophet and not a false prophet. Miracles. miracles. So the miracles certify that this person is from Allah. And the nature of the miracle was specific to the prophet and to the people. Such that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Musa alayhi salatu wa salam the miracles which, was in, which would have proven that he is sent by Allah He gave him such a miracle that was applicable to the people of his time The people of his time they were experts in magic So he did not endow that prophet or granted that prophet a miracle that did not have any relevance, meaning or what the people were not expert in so the people in that time, the magicians they were, they, they, they were able to know exactly what is magic because they are practicing it, they are experts in it and what is not this is why when Musa والسلام, threw his stick and it turned into the serpent and swallowed up theirs they knew this is not folly this is not camera tricks this is real and immediately they became Muslims despite the fact that it meant that they were going to be put to death by Fir'aun. So Allah gave them such a miracle that they can, they can cipher, they will know. And in the time of Ibrahim والسلام, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Ibrahim والسلام, such miracles that was able to prove to his people. What, what did his people excel in? Reason and logic. So he broke the idol. He asked them about the rising of the sun and the setting of the sun and all these questions and about the star and about the moon. So he broke the idol. The people are claiming that the idols, they are, they are in power, they have strength, they are in control, these are the gods. And then they say, okay, now we are going to punish you for what you have done, 
Ibrahim. But Allah did not save Ibrahim السلام, from the punishment. Allah did not avert the punishment of Ibrahim being thrown into the fire. He let it ride, he let it happen. But when Ibrahim السلام, was thrown into the fire, and Allah said, Ya naru kuni bardaw wa salam an Allah Ibrahim, O oh, fire, become cool. Fire is hot. But Allah said, No, don't burn him now, become cool. All the reason and all the logic went out the door. Because we built such a fire that was supposed to roast Ibrahim. We could not even go close. They could not even go close to put him. They had to build a big catapult. That catapult, if you go in Turkey right now, the, the pillars of it are still there. Hmm? They had to build a big catapult to toss him into the fire. All logics, all reason will say he will be destroyed. But was he destroyed? Allah destroyed the miracle was to destroy their reason and logic in such a way that everyone can see and in time of Isa والسلام, the people they excelled in in what? medicine so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave Isa والسلام, such a miracle that the people they were expert in it and they will know this is the normal way of curing and this can be cured and that cannot be cured so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed Isa alayhi salatu wa salam gave him the miracle of curing the blind and the leper and bringing back the dead and like this. Now comes to our turn now. What is the miracle? What is the miracle that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa that will be relevant to the people of his time? And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the Prophet until the day of Qiyamah that will also be relevant to us and the thing about a miracle is that when you see it and you experience it and you feel it and you touch it you would know this is not ordinary a stick cannot part a sea but Musa والسلام, Allah allowed for that to happen Allah caused that miracle for the people to see and thus Iman is supposed to have gone into their hearts Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with the miracle of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And what is that? Splitting of the moon? The Quran. The Quran is the living miracle. But what aspect of the Quran is miraculous? What is the miracle of Quran? Okay, what again? It's miraculous about the Quran that Allah has preserved it. What again? Huh? It can be memorized to cover. And we will say, we will talk about its eloquence and its meaning and its depth and all of that. All of those are factors and beauties of the Quran. The real miracle of Quran that is what the challenge of Quran is about when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Quran puts out the challenge out there that, that challenge that Allah puts out if you are in doubt that this is not from Allah this is not a miracle then produce people have done they have put together one or two little sentences and they say well, well this is like Quran the miracle of Quran that cannot be reproduced something may, may be done but if somebody comes forth with something and say you cannot reproduce this you have to be able to reproduce it in all its shape and its fashion if you bring a little child and you tell them lift up something very heavy that a child normally cannot lift right and he lifts it up and somebody watching and he's saying but what's difficult about that I can lift it up look I lift it up has he discredited your claim has he taken away the, the, the astonishing fact that this child can lift up this? The thing that is really astonishing is not lifting up the weight itself, but that is done by a child who normally and will not be able to do that. The miracle of Quran is Muhammadur Rasulullah. That Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who is Al-Ummi, didn't go to school, doesn't know to read and write, doesn't know the alphabet. That it came through him. 
not from him, it came through him. So you get somebody now. The miracle and the challenge is not to ask somebody to write it, anybody. To go to some, um, somebody who has a major or some philosopher or something. And tell, no, you get somebody who cannot read and who cannot write and did not go to school, does not even know the alphabet, cannot even sign his name. Hmm? When the treaties were being made and time to sign, Rasulullah is the Amir. He has to sign the document, sign the treaty of Hudaybiyah. He couldn't even sign his name. Ali radiallahu ta'ala had to come and do it. When the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa had letters to write to the, to the various people, he didn't sign his name. He had the ring with Allah, Jibreel, Muhammad to stamp it. He couldn't even sign his name. But that Quran came through him. You get somebody who can't sign their name. Who did not go to school, who was not taught, who is al ummi who is unlettered, and let him produce fatu bi suratim min misli. Let him produce something like that. Understand what is the challenge now? Not for me, Tom, Dick, Harry, Professor, whatever, Doctor, to produce something. Hmm? Get an ummi, somebody who can't read and write, let him produce it. Until today, that challenge stands. But the problem is that we are not in touch with the miracle. Quran is such a miracle. Quran is such a thing that whatever it touches, whoever it touches, wherever it touches, whenever it touches, becomes great. The Quran was revealed. It touched the night in which it was revealed. And that night became what? Khairun min al Laylatul Qadr. That night became Laylatul Qadr. The night it touched. The month it touched. Shahr Ramadan alladhi unzila fihi al-Quran. Became the greatest month. Hmm? The day it touched became the greatest day. The month it touched became the greatest month. The place it was revealed in Makkah and Medina are the two jewels of the earth. They are the greatest of places. The person that touched Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Whosoever, whatever Quran touches, becomes the best and becomes the greatest. Hmm? But we're out of touch, we're not connected. So because of that, the miracle is playing itself out. It is right in front of us. But we're out of touch. How many surahs, how many surahs do we know? How much do, of Quran do we recite daily? And the more we get in touch with Quran, and the more Quran touches us, it is the greater and greater we will get. We will see the reality of it on the day of Qiyamah. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to the men of Quran, Read. Read. Kama kunta turattilu fi dunya. As you should read in the world and keep ascending, keep ascending. How far are we going? Surah Fatiha. Kudhu wa lawad. Inna ta'ina. Alam tara kaifa. And we stop. That's how far we will reach. The Quran is the miracle of this Ummah. And for any change to happen, the revolution that the revelation started, that is where it will start back again. We have to get back to the cave of Hira. And we have to start the Iqra. We have to start reading and reading and reading. I'll give you a little example. This Quran, it is the summary of all revealed books. The Quran was revealed over the period of 23 years. 13 years in Makkah, 83 surahs revealed in Makkah. 10 years in Medina, how much? 31. 31 in Medina, 31 surahs in Medina. The first surah to be revealed in Medina is Surah Al-Baqarah. All of these surahs, they have nur in them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He has taken all the various messages and condensed it in Quran. And all the meanings, all, Allah condensed it in Surah Al-Fatiha. The Quran has been divided into four parts in relation to its themes and its meanings. Four sections. So each section is how much? A quarter. 
right? Each section is a quarter. There are other divisions in Quran that are there for a reason. Quran has been divided into 30 juz so that a person can read one section every day and in one month complete a Quran. The Quran has been divided into 540 rukus. 540 rukus. A ruku is the amount that you can read in a salah that contains one subject matter. So in one rakat you read a ruku. Right? And then it's appropriate to make a ruku because you didn't cut the message in half. So the ruku is signified by a ayn. In the Quran, that's a section. 540 rukus. So in Tarawi, how much rakats? 20 rakats. So how much rukus? 20 rukus. 27 multiplied by 20 is 540. The Quran has been divided into 540 rukus to cater for you reading 20 rakats every night in Tarawi and finishing when? 27. The Quran has also been divided into seven parts. These parts are called manzils. This is to facilitate reading one manzil every what? Day, so you can finish one Quran weekly. So the Quran is divided in various parts and in various respects. So the Quran according to themes, the theme, the main theme is divided into four parts. Thus you have four quarters. The first quarter is from Surah Al-Fatiha, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, and ends at Surah Al-Ma'idah. What surah is Surah Ma'idah? The fifth surah of Quran. So that's the first quarter. The second surah, second quarter, starts from Surah An'am, and ends at Surah Bani Israel. That's the second quarter. Surah Bani Israel is the? Which surah? 16 to 17. 17th Surah of Quran. Next Surah is? Uh, surah Al-Kahf. First quarter, alef, Alhamdulillah, until what? End of Ma'idah. An'am starts the second quarter, until uh, end of Bani Israel. Surah Al-Kahf starts the second half and the third quarter. In Surah Al-Kahf, there is the word, Wal Yatalattaf. Who can tell me what, is, what that word signifies? The center of the Quran in relation to the number of letters this side and the number of letters that side. That is the center, that's the division, of, that's the half of Quran in relation to what? Number of letters, number of letters. But as far as the half of Quran, as far as topics are concerned, it ends at Surah Bani Israel, begins with Surah Al-Kahf. From Surah Al-Kahf to Surah Ahzab, 33rd Surah of Quran is the third quarter. The fourth quarter begins with Surah Saba, that is the 34th Surah of Quran, 35th is Fatir, and what is 36? Yasin. So the fourth quarter begins with Saba and ends with Nas, Min al Jinnati wa Nas. This is in respect to the themes and topics of Quran. Where does it begin? Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. That begins the first quarter. The second quarter starts with an arm. How does an arm start? Alhamdulillah. Surah an arm starts. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Alladhi layla. The third quarter starts with Surah Al Kahf. How does it begin? Alhamdulillah alladhi anzala ala abdihi al-kitaba wa lam yaj'allahu wa iwaja That starts the what? Third quarter. The fourth quarter starts with Surah Sabah. How does it begin? Alhamdulillah. Each quarter of the Quran, the Surah that begins that quarter starts with Alhamdulillah. 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 There are five Surahs that begins with Alhamdulillah. I told you four of them. What is it? Surah Fatiha, Surah An'am, Surah Surah Al-Kahf, Surah Saba, and the one next to Saba. I told you it as well. Before Yasin, Surah Fatiha. Yeah? 
Surah Fatir. These five surah, they are called the Hamdaniyah. Surahs that begin with Alhamdulillah. When you know Quran, when you know your Quran, and each of these quarters, what is the summary of the first, first quarter? Allah does everything. Alhamdulillah. Summary of the second quarter? Huh? Allah does what He please. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Huh? Rabbil Alameen. Allah is the nourisher. He takes care of everything in the world. That's the second quarter. Third quarter, Allah does as He please. Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim. Fourth quarter, talks about the day of judgment. Maliki Yawmiddin. These three ayats of Surah Fatiha is the summary of the themes of each of the four quarters. When, when you know Quran, what is becoming clear? This is a miracle. People will bring numbers and num numerology. And get into Quran. The more you get into it, you will see. Don't stand up and watch the Red Sea part from a distance. It will look like nothing. Walk between. When you go in between the partitions of the Red Sea, then you realize what a miracle it is when you watch this body of water on one side, standing and separated, and you watch that body of water. When you get into the partition, this, the Red Sea was not parted like this, you know. It was parted in 12 different partitions. Each partition, each, each for one of the tribes of Bani Israel. When you are inside there, would you not understand what a miracle this is? When you watch at that body of water and you look in front and you look at the back. When we dive into Quran and we go into it, then we'll understand this miracle. Because this is a miracle that appeals to a people who are supposed to have sense. And something will only make sense to you if you're dabbling in it. If you are dealing with it, otherwise it is just there. But because we are not connected to Quran, we are not connected to Quran, we will not feel its miracle. Make your children hufaz. Sadaq Allah wa sadaq al-Rasul. Allah and His Messenger spoke the truth. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, A skin that wraps the Quran will never burn. How come I call? If you take the Quran and put it in the skin, that skin will not, that Quran will not burn, the skin will not burn. I have seen people who were supposed to be charred, barbecued by fire, and because they have Quran in their hearts, they are not burned. I have seen it. Sadaqa Rasul, the Messenger of Allah has spoken the truth. Immunize your children. We, we have the excuse, our head too hard. But immunize your children from the fire of Jahannam. We, we care about them. Yes, indeed, about this world. What about the hereafter? What about eternity? Al Quran, hujjatun laka. We beat our chest with pride and glory. Quran, Quran, Quran. But Al Quran, hujjatun laka wa alayka. The Prophet said, The Quran is your defense lawyer or your prosecutor. The Quran will either defend you or prosecute you. It is either a proof for you or a proof against you. Make our children hufas. Come, to send them to the maktabs, daily maktabs. Make sure, make sure that they have kalamullah, that they become part of the process of the preservation and the continuation of Quran. What's the name? How do you call somebody who has memorized Quran? Who has Quran in their heart? Huh? Hafiz. Hafiz means protector. It is the ismul fa'il, the active participle, the one who is protecting Quran. But the miracle of it is that when you offer yourself to be a protector of Quran, the Quran now becomes your protector and the true name of a hafiz should be mahfuz one who is protected because by having the quran in your heart whether it is in your heart or not in your heart the quran is going to be protected allah is this is the promise of allah allah will protect it but by having it in your heart now you become protected you are the protected one you become mahfuz we're not doing something that that is not going to be done but by being a Hafiz, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is granting you the opportunity to be protected. 
But everything will occur and will happen with time. When we devote time, when we put aside time to learn to read the Quran, learn to read the Quran, recite the Quran, read the English, get involved in the tafsir, get, go deeper into it, become alims, go and study and go deep into the Quran, then we'll see what a miracle Quran is. Leave it by itself, it is what it is, but we want to be attached with it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَاَتَصِمُوا بِحَبِّ اللَّهِ Hold firmly to the rope of Allah. This word, this ayat is usually, usually translated, hold firmly to the rope of Allah. Hablun rope. I like to sometimes translate it as hold firmly to the extension cord from Allah. This is the extension plug, so you have to plug in yourself. You have to get plugged in. Then, then when the electricity is flowing, then the duas will be answered. When the current is there, then the machine will work. Before it will not work. You can press, press, press. It's not going to work because it's not connected. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala connect us to his kalam. This is no simple thing. This is kalamullah. This is the words of Allah. The words of Allah which are called the sifat and the attribute of Allah. Quran is called ghayri makluq, the uncreated eternal, eternal in the future and pre-eternal was always there. The Quran was not created at any specific point in time. It did not come into existence like other things. It is the pre-eternal words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Angels cannot recite Quran. Angels don't have the ability to recite Quran. That is why when a person is reciting Quran, they come and they throne about and they listen. That is like honor, that is a big thing for them. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us, put it at our disposal, granted us this opportunity. Do not let it go. Connect yourself with Quran because connecting yourself with Quran is connecting yourself to Allah. And no one can get to Allah by any means or through any means better than that which came from Allah. No man can get to Allah faster and through any other means better than that which came directly from Allah and that which is Allah, His words. This is Kalam Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the ability, the hidayah, the tawfiq to memorize Quran, to learn Quran, to practice Quran that this is the cause that we have to champion. This is the cause that will solve all the other problems, all the other hurts. The revival of the Quran, firstly, as in knowledge and then in practice. Wa <laughs>